room that we're standing in, I call the association room. The reason is a lot of the equipment in here belonged to or is, is part of a famous magician's act. The first guy I'd like to talk about is Harry Keller. So the top shelf here is all Keller's equipment. Uh, you're seeing postcards, the, the arithmetic calculator. There is a letter from Keller to Houdini thanking him for dedicating the Magical Rope Ties and Escape book. And then right in the center are two cups that are very important. These cups were once in the Egyptian Hall Museum. I'd like to read the letter that, that Harry Waller gave to Egyptian Hall when he donated these cups to them. It says, this brand and coffee set was sold, by my sold to my father, Jim Willard, by Harry Keller many years ago. We both used it in our shows. I now want it to rest in the Egyptian Hall Museum in Nashville, Tennessee. Harry F. Willard. How do you get any better than that? From Keller to Jim Willard to Harry Willard. The next row of things here is all uh, belong to Fu Manchu. So there are traveling bird cages. There's the watch target. There's a color changing mirror and a blue phantom tube, all belonging to Fu Manchu. At the bottom, T. Nelson Downs equipment. Uh, you're looking at his Masonic certificate, his devil sticks, uh, and on the, on the left, you're looking at uh, his billiard ball stand, all belonging to T. Nelson Downs, all with perfect provenance. This is part of my Doug Henning display. You know, Doug came on the scene in 1974 in the magic show in a big way and really changed magic. And uh, because of that, he holds a pretty big display here in my association piece room. And I just want to talk about part of it. Uh, the, the outfit that you see there with the rainbow on it is his water levitation outfit. It's rainproof and that's what he used to do that. The lightning bolt outfit you've seen on the cover of the Linking Ring and many of the TV shows that he's uh, been in, it's uh, kind of an iconic outfit for him. Yes, those are his boots, as you can see there, and his travel bag. That is a Kyber Cobra. When Doug came back, and on, at, towards the end of his life, he was starting to get into magic again. And that was one of the effects that, uh, that he bought and was performing uh, about the time he passed away. And I was able to obtain that from Debbie Henning. So Doug was pretty important to me and I think pretty important to the, to the history of the world. So uh, very pleased to have these items. Most of the items that you see in this display belong to Charles Carter. We'll start with the center table. Uh, it, this is his uh, center table circa 1910. You actually can see a photo of him there with Evelyn Maxwell with the table. This is his canary to light bulb, a sword that he used in his act as well, the cone and skittle trick was also his, the cube libra was also his, notice the color coordination with the canary to light bulb. The other fascinating thing that I have of his is, is uh, his appearing lamp and uh, it's there on the side. Uh, this was a total reconstruction by Paul Limbo. When I bought this, it was in uh, a really deplorable condition, and uh, Paul's got it back looking uh, as it did when it was new. When I looked that effect up in the catalog, actually, I found out that there was a vanishing part to that as well. So I actually had Paul create the vanishing part, which is behind me. And uh, he did such an excellent job, you can't even tell the difference in the two. He aged the metal in it, uh, all the materials, all the old antique wiring. So they actually are, uh, you know, he did a really nice job in replicating uh, Charles Carter's appearing in a vanishing lamps. I mentioned that the shooting through a woman uh, was done back in the 20s. And, and here it is, uh, this is Carter shooting through a woman. You can see the outfits that there that was used, and you can see the lady in the, wearing the outfit just above. So again, uh, I collect a lot of costumes, and that one's kind of special. Speaking of special, this particular uh, costume is her Chinese robe is Jack Wins. 
uh, and also this particular one is Virgil's. In the 1950s, uh, space was all the rage with Buck Rogers and all the other things that, that were going on at the time. And so Virgil took a very dated trick called Shooting Through a Woman that had been performed uh, since the late 20s and turned it into this, which is a trip to Mars. And basically it's a P&O converted Shooting Through a Woman made it look like a space gun. So. Uh, very clever idea from Virgil and, and kept him with the times. McDonald Birch was from Ohio and uh, I have a big part of his show here actually. Uh, the most famous prop which you see in all of his uh, displays is the Birch Nest of Boxes. And I have the original Birch Nest, Birch Nest of Boxes that I acquired from Bill King. I also have his duplicating chairs. So what, this, what these are, are the spectator comes on stage, there's one chair, the magician spins around and there's, uh, there's two, one for each spectator. Uh, so these are the multiplying chairs. There's some controversy over who made these. Uh, Terry Harris, who I acquired them from, insisted it was Thayer. But if you look on, the, uh, on, on Phil Schwartz's Thayer website, you'll see these same chairs, identical but in black. Uh, from Tad Ware, and they have a DeVere label on them. So in any event, uh, these are very, very rare chairs, uh, beautifully, beautifully made. Uh, Bev Bergeron talked about seeing Mac Birch do these on the, on the uh, Abbott show in Cullen, Michigan. And so I do, I do have an Abbott's uh, sign back there with him as well, because I know he performed them around 1960 on the Abbott show. So, uh, Bunch of bunch of uh, Birch's beautiful things, the the, the stock of doom, uh, aerial fishing, uh, a fair table, uh, just just beautiful things from the McDonald Birch show. This is a cabinet containing all Harry Houdini memorabilia. Uh, much of it signed. Uh, there are photographs signed, decal the the famous decal from uh, the time period, postcards signed, uh, just many fabulous things from Houdini. But I want to talk about two things in particular. One is the SAM card of Oscar Thiel. This was signed by Harry Houdini and Oscar Thiel. Oscar Thiel being the secretary uh, of the uh, SAM at the time. So a very, very unique piece. The other piece I'd like to talk about is this. It's a challenge, and it's a uh, packing box challenge. So the most interesting thing about this is the back of it. This is a drawing showing exactly the size that the packing box should be, what it should be made out of, and exactly how to build it. Uh, my guess is this was delivered by Houdini's people to the people making the challenge to make sure that they were building the box the right size and the right structure uh, for Houdini's show that particular night. So there it is, the Houdini Packing Case Challenge. This was in 1923. This is Edgar Bergen's Blooming Rose Bush. And uh, this is seen on the This Is Your Life show with Blackstone. Edgar actually comes out and performs this exact illusion. So we have the rose bush, we have the case with Edgar's name on it, and the cloth that you see there was used to as a table wrap when uh, Mr. Bergen was performing magic. So Edgar Bergen, Bergen's um, blooming rose bush, very pleased to have it. Without question, one of my favorite things, Josephi's expanding queen. Josephi was thought of as a genius among early magicians, and even so today. He invented things like uh, balsamo and the wrapping hand that are in the Johnny Gone collection. This is one, my one piece of Josephi. Uh, very little is out there, so this is the expanding queen. It's a series of gears, levers, and springs designed to turn that small queen into a large queen. You'd think it could have been done a lot easier by sleight of hand, but that's not how Josephi worked or thought. He was a genius and a fantastic engineer. 
once he created that card, it was switched for this card, uh, which was then handed out to the audience. This one is signed uh, June uh, 29th, 1915. So Josephi, really a genius when it comes to mechanics. This is a basically a napkin celebrating a meeting or a celebration for uh, Orson Welles. And this is an Orson Welles self-portrait signed by him, but it's also signed by uh, many, many producers, directors, and magicians. Some of the magicians that you would recognize would be Di Vernon, John Scarney, Roy Benson, Jay Marshall, uh, and, and many others and also uh, many producers uh, of the day. So this was done on September 4th, I'm not sure what year, but I'm guessing sometime in the 1950s. Tom Mullica, one of my favorite performers. In fact, I've even created my little tomfoolery bar here in, in the basement of my home. I'm gonna talk about a couple of things. First of all, the sign. It was in the tomfoolery theater I talked to Tom about this personally uh, at Abbott's when, uh, after I bought it. He said he actually carried that sign all over the country with him and set it up when he worked. And it was part of the original Tom Foolery. So I was very pleased uh, to, to have uh, the sign that I was able to purchase in uh, the, the Tom's auction that he had with Potter and Potter. The next thing I want to talk about is very dear to me as well. It's the cigarette case and lighter. This is Tom's first cigarette case and lighter that he ever purchased for his nincompoop act. And he bought it in Germany in 1969 when he was in the military. The very first one he ever used. And there's a letter from Tom uh, with it uh, stating that uh, this is the first one he ever used. So the bucket that you see is Tom Mullica's Miser's Dream Bucket. Uh, this is what he performed with at the Tom Foolery. Inside of it, he wrote, this is the bucket I pissed in. So there must be a heck of a story that goes along with that. So all of this ties in to make my own little Tom Fullery bar here. My favorite close-up magician was no doubt Del Rey. I watched him perform for hours. Could have watched him for days. I do have a collection of his items here. Most of these came from the estate of Bob Escher. And here I have Del Rey's dice ladder. I have one of his birds. Those birds that he used, by the way, were just a group of, they were just normal toys that he bought and converted. So that's, that's one that he had used in the past and it eventually failed him. And uh, so he convert, went on to the next one. This is his box of Little Willies. You'll all remember Little Willie. This is what he kept them in. Also, I have a, a little transformer that he, that, of his, business card. Carrier, all again from the estate of Bob Asher. Very pleased to have these things. You know, I was on the leading edge of costume collecting. It was something that I had, I had a passion for long before uh, most people. And now they're very difficult to find and very expensive when you do. But here are two uh, in my collection. The first one is the Great Leons. I actually bought it a number of years ago at a Potter auction. And the second one is Fu Manchu's Chinese robe. And it always helps when you have a picture of the man wearing the robe itself. And one of my other passions is collecting books signed by one famous magician to another. And I'd just like to take a little sample here and show you a few that I have in my collection. The first one is Miracle Mongers and Their Methods by Houdini. And it's autographed to Walter Lippmann. Walter Lippmann was the father of modern journalism. He was the guy that ran with, uh, ran with presidents and just uh, a kind of guy Houdini would have liked to have been around. This created quite, quite a stir in the Houdini world when I bought this book because the inscription says, I did the Buried Alive in Berlin, Germany, 1908, rebuilt it in 1916 and still have, have apparatus, May 27th, 1926. So it was always believed that the first time Houdini did the Buried Alive illusion was in 1916, but here, for the first time, we've got proof that it was done in 1908. Next one I'd like to show you is 
Okito's Quality Magic. This is actually signed in a couple places. Uh, on, on the picture, it says, Sincerely yours, Theo Okito Cairo. But it's really signed to Victor Ferrelli, wishing him some pleasant memories with Quality Magic. Theo Okito Cairo, January 22nd, 1922. If you're an Okito fan, how's it getting better than that? The Jarrett Book. The Jarrett Book's kind of famous among magicians. You know, uh, Guy Jarrett wrote the book, and he was a cantankerous old soul, but he also had a sense of humor. This is to Rush Walsh, where he says, I don't see how you're going to get five bucks worth out of this. You've been gypped, Guy Jarrett. <laughs> this is from one of my favorite magicians to another one of my favorite magicians. It's from Howard Thurston to Tommy Downs. And it says, to my old friend Tommy Downs, we have traveled the same road and spoke the same magic language, the road that is not often traveled. See you in eternity, Tommy. Affectionately, Howard Thurston, June 3rd, 1930. Pretty cool. This one. We all know Di Vernon, the father of close-up magic. And this was written to him by Beatrice Houdini, it says to David Vernon, the greatest genius with the cards I have ever seen. And I have seen many, and I bet she did. Beatrice Houdini. This particular book is just interesting because of what it is. It's a pretty valuable book to begin with. It's uh, the ghost, about well, Pepper's ghost. And it was in the library of Houdini at one time. So it's, I consider that kind of an important volume. Herman the Magician. William Robinson worked uh, for Herman, and here he autographed this to Charles Bertram from W. Robinson. I've got several books here signed by Houdini. Another one to my old friend R.M. Scott with compliments and best wishes from the author. May the pursuit of my book conjure up pleasant memories of the dim past. Harry Houdini, 1908. So that's just a sampling of, of what we have here. A lot, of, a lot more of them, but uh, those are the key ones I'd like to talk to you about today. This screen is a really unique uh, item. It belonged to one of my favorite magicians, Harry Blackstone Sr. In fact, this was listed on George Hipsley's list of Blackstone items that he tried to sell back in the, I believe it was in the 70s. This is from 1920, and Harry performed with this in, in the 1920 uh, uh, time frame. Basically, it is a girl production where the screen's carried out on the stage and on, by two guys on each of their shoulders. It's set flat, it's formed into a triangle, and a massive amount of production comes out of it, and at the end, a girl. If you would look at this in detail, you're going to see panels all over it that are opening and closing. It's gimmick to the max, and again, uh, Pretty neat invention for, uh, for Harry in uh, 1920. Robert Heller's top hat from about 1870. Robert Heller was a contemporary of Robert Houdin. And uh, this is his top hat. When we talk about provenance, you, we mentioned it earlier, you really need to nail these things down. This was in the Heller family for many years. I bought it from his great-great-granddaughter. I uh, was able to get a uh, marriage license from her all the way back to Robert Heller, a sworn affidavit from her. This had stayed in her family. It also came with the, the uh, top hat case, which has his initials on it. So uh, this provenance is, is pretty well nailed down. This, this hat belonged to Robert Heller. You know, when I received it, there was a, there was a, uh, label on the side of it that says the Grand Hotel Yokohama Japan, Yokohama Japan and I'm thinking there's no way there was a Grand Hotel in Yokohama Japan in, in the 1870s so thank God for the internet I got on there and looked it up uh, it opened in 1867 so uh, we know that uh, Robert Heller was at the Grand Hotel in Yokohama Japan at some point in his life as well the Houdini bust, one of two that came out of the Houdini Museum in Niagara Falls. 
This one was damaged in uh, the fire. It was actually knocked to the ground and broken into four pieces. It was later restored by a master uh, sculptor and uh, is now in my collection. So this was one of two that was in the Houdini Hall of Fame. The other one is in the David Copperfield Museum.